Good afternoon. Yudalit Sivan, Tashin Pei Aleph. We're in the Oris HaTorah of Rav Kook using Rav Tzvan Yudrori's Perush. We take a look for a set of Pasuk in Pasha's Hazinu. We began looking at this Pasik uh, the last time we met, I believe it was before Shavuos. Pa- Pasik in Pasha's Hazinu. The Sephorim tell us, the Vulnagoyin also, the Vulnagoyinites, that all of history from the beginning of the world through Bias Mashiach is in Pasha's Hazinu. The Vilna Gaon went so far as to say that every, every Jewish person's name can be found in Hazinu. You just, the, the letters, the first letters, second letters, third letters, first letters, you can find, you know, supposedly there's a story, someone came to the Vilna Gaon and said, where's my name? And he showed him where's his name. So in Hazinu, the Rabbana Shalom it takes the heavens and the earth as his witnesses to the message in Hazinu. If you show him a Torah mitzvah, if you not show him a Torah mitzvah, and the heavens and the earth become witnesses for this purpose. <clears throat> There's a Pasek, Pasek Lamed Beis, Pasek talks about Klal Yisrael not acting in the best way. Shiche Sloi, Loi Bonov Mumom, Dor Ike Shufasalto. And then Pasek says, Ha Lashem Tigmulu Zois, how can you treat God this way? Whatever the Aveiris are, or the Zor, or whatever the Aveiris are, how can you do this to God? Halashem Tigmulzois, Am Novol Veloichacham. Referring to Klal Yisrael as an Am Novol, we don't know what the word novel. When we talk about novel, we usually refer to a novel. He's a disgusting person. Menovel. Although that's usually spelled with a vav. But a novel is uh, something disgusting. I'm novel and you're not smart either. Halahu avicha kanecha, God is your father who created you, he put you together, who asachavayachainanecha. He made you a nation amongst the um and amongst all the nations, and he set you up as kahanim, etc. That's according to Rashi. In the Targum Unculus, we just spoke about the Targum Unculus this morning in the women's shear. Uh, Unculus Hager, we don't have the full appreciation for Unculus like the Yemenite Jews have, um, because <clears throat> we have stopped using, except for Shnai Mikrov Echatag, and we have stopped using Unculus. But in the olden days, the way Kriya Satoira went was the Balkari read a Pasuk and the, uh, there was a Matargim who read the Unculus. He read the Targum. And the Balkari read another Pasuk and then the Targum. I heard this one time. My son was getting bar mitzvah in a hotel over Shabbos. And we had a shul in the hotel. There was another shul, there was another bar mitzvah. And they started earlier than we did. And I heard something Aramaic going on next door. So I went next door, and there they were, the queer satira, and they had a matagim. So they still do it. We don't do it anymore for reasons discussed in the Redi Divi Shaina. We don't do this anymore. But Unculus, Unculus was a gear. He was the nephew of Titus, the Gemara says in Gittin. Well, there has an interesting dialogue between Unculus and his uncle Titus. Unculus went to uncle Titus and said, no, I'm thinking of becoming a convert to Judaism. What do you think? And uh, interesting dialogue going on there. And he was Magaya. 
and he became is a Tana. He lives during the time of Titus, which means at the destruction of the second base Hamikdash. He lives in the time of Yechonim and Zakkai. And what he says in the Targum Unkelis is the equivalent of a Tana speaking. We don't get that full appreciation. If next to the Chumash it said Targum Rabbi Yechonim ben Zakkai, we go, whoa. Or it said Targum Rabbi Akiva, whoa. Targum Unkelis by Tana. He's a Tana. And then more there gives Chesh ben Megillah, Daf Gimel, and Aleph, where <clears throat> where Uncle got the Targum from. He didn't make it up. He had a he got a Kabbalah of the Targum. So on this pasuk, Halashem tignu zayis amno v'loichacham al ha'aviv kanech v'schava chaynech. This is what the Uncle says. Hakodem Hashem atom gamlum. Is this the way you act in front of God? It's a very famous onkelis. You people who are macabre the Torah and didn't get any, any wiser from it. That's a novel. I'm novel. You are an am novel because you accepted the Torah. You didn't get any smarter from the Torah I gave you. <laughs> a, that is a very, very, very serious indictment. We're talking here to the door, Makabli Torah. This is the door in the midbar. You accepted the Torah. It's, it's uh, the door after the, the Maraglim. This is the door of people going to Eretz Yisrael. And Moshe is telling them, you took the Torah and you didn't get any wiser from it. The next pasuk is Remember the days of the world, history, and understand every generation. In other words, every generation has to have its understanding of what's happening in its generation. Zachor Yomais Oilam, remember the days of the world, remember past history. Binu, and with that understanding of history, Binu Shnai Starvador, get an understanding of the years of each generation. So the past history has to help you understand your generation. Ask your father, and he'll tell you what happened before you. <coughs> Ask Yezayid, and he'll also tell you. You need to know the past to be able to fully understand the present, and of course, to be able to move into the future. This is the anti-cancel culture posse. Right In America, there's such a thing called cancel culture. We want to completely disconnect from what happened in the past. The past are all a bunch of bad people, and we are the good people. We're going to create a new America that is free to loot and rob and kill. This is the good America that we're going to make because all the old people that set up America were a bunch of terrible people. We're making a better America where you can loot and rob and burn. So this is our anti-cancel culture. We don't understand the present unless we understand the past. And to understand the past, we go to our elders, our parents, our grandparents to find out what happened in their time. And they can tell us what happened in their father and Zayda's time. And you go all the way back to Moshe Rabbeinu so we can get an history. So Rashi says, Binu Shnoi Storm Dor Dor Enosh, Dor Hamabal. These are the things we need to learn. What happened in the Dor of Enosh? where a vast majority of the world was drowned in the Okeanos, wasn't yet a marble, but there was something called the Dor Enosh, where a vast majority of mankind was drowned. And they didn't get the message, came a Dor Hamabal. And these are the things that we need to learn and understand about the past, to be able to understand the present, and to be able to understand the future. Moral, immorality, perversion, is a, a recipe for self-destruction.
So Rav Kook is going to focus on is on this statement, Am Novo Chacham. A nation that accepted the Torah and didn't get any wiser for it. What does that mean? What is Uncle is telling us here? What is the Pasik telling us here? This indictment of a generation, Am Novo Chacham. And the Pasik that comes after that is now that you understand you're an Am Novo Chacham. There's an Eitzah. The Eitzah is the Choyim Ois Olam Binu Shnei Star Vadar. You have accepted the Torah and you didn't get any wiser for it. But there's a Takana here. There's a way you can fix this. Go back in history, study your history and understand the present day based upon that history and maybe you can fix up this Am Novel V'Loi Chachem. <coughs> We take a look at page two of the handout. We read uh, part of this, I believe, last time we met. This is inserts to the Rav Kook. The Rav Kook doesn't begin until page three. Rav Kook, I'm sorry, Rav Kook is on page one of your handout. On page two, you begin having full citation to things that Rav Kook quoted. Rav Drori put it into the Sefer. So since Rav, Rav Dro, since the Rav Kook is going to talk about this Pasuk of Am Novel V'loi Chacham, so Rav Drori inserted into the Pasuk certain commentaries of Am Novel V'loi Chacham that will help us understand the Rav Kook. So let's take a look at the Hemek Dava. This is from the Netziv. We all know the Netziv was the Rashiva in Volozhin. Rav Chaim Volozhin opened the Yeshiva in Volozhin. Chaim Volozhin, Talmud of the Gra, opened the Volozhin Yeshiva. Later on, <coughs> the Rosh Yeshiva became Rav Chaim, who later is known as Rav Chaim Brisker. And the Rosh Yeshiva, Rav Chaim Brisker, and the Netziv. The two of them were Rosh Yeshivas in Volozhin. That didn't work out very well. Since, they, since the two of them had virtually opposite Dera Halimud, and eventually Reb Chaim left and went to Brisk. And the Tziv became the Rosh Yeshiva in Volozhin. During that period of time, Rav Kook became a Talmud in Volozhin. So Rav Kook became a very close Talmud of the Tziv. And because the Netziv and Volozhin were coming from the Gra, so Rav Kook was very familiar with the writings of the Gra. So we have here a Netziv in Pasha's Hazinu on this Pasek. Halashem Tigmolu Zayis. Amar al Chubrim Bayis Rishon. Moshe Rabbeinu is talking to Klal Yisrael. Hazinu has all past, present, and future. And Moshe Rabbeinu is talking to them already about the first destruction and the second destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. So before we go any further, we need to understand how these kind of prophecies work. We come across this a lot in the women's shir because there are prophecies about terrible things that are going to happen. It doesn't mean they have to happen. The Rambam Api Chazal explains to us at the end of Hilchas Yisoide HaTayra a very important um, premise upon which to understand Nevi'im. When a Navi says, God has sent me to tell you that he is going to destroy you or he's going to destroy a city and the prophecy does not come true, the city is not destroyed that is not proof that he's a false prophet. Because the prophecy can well be true, but the Rebbe Shalom accepted shuva from the people of the city. He didn't destroy the city. Doesn't mean the prophet said anything false. Because when Hakadosh Baruch Hu tells a prophet to tell somebody about destruction, it could very well mean it's a Musa Shmuz. It doesn't mean you're going to be destroyed. It means if you don't clean up your act, you will be destroyed. If you clean up the act, Kodesh Baruch is a Kabbal Shuvah. The Ramam says the perfect example of this is Ninveh. We all know the story. That's why Yonah didn't want to go to Ninveh. He ran away when, when the Kodesh Baruch Hu told him, go tell the people in Ninveh that we're going to wipe out the city, that you, I'm going to wipe out the city. He rushed to the nearest port, got on a boat, and tried to flee from HaKadosh Baruch Why? Because he wasn't going to tell 
the people of Nineveh that God's going to destroy the city because he knew that if the people of Nineveh do tshuva, God will accept the tshuva and what will he be looked upon as? A false prophet. And he said, maybe find somebody else to, to bring this message. God didn't like that. Swallow him in a fish. Bechulu, bechulu, you know the story. And it works out that way. He goes to Nineveh and he says, oh, God's going to destroy the city. All of Nineveh does tshuva and the city is saved. And then at the end of Sefer Yonah, Yonah's a bit, a bit disappointed. He's sitting under the Kikayon de Yonah, and then the Kikayon dries up, and he's upset that the Kikayon dried up because now he has no shade. And the Baruch says to him, you're so upset about a little tree dried up. You know how many people would have been killed? That would have been made you happy. So it worked out exactly the way Yonah feared, that God would accept the tshuva and he wouldn't destroy the city. Okay? And he would end up looking like a false prophet. That's a rule for destructive nevoah. They don't have to happen. A positive nevoah, the Rabbonu Shalom is going to send you bracha atzlocha, and I'm telling you in the name of God, you're going to win the war, b'chula b'chula. Those things can't be changed. A nevoah l'tayva can't be changed, with one exception, the Ramam explains from a Gemara and Shabbos, not in the for us today. Other than that, that's the difference between a nevoah l'tayva and a nevoah l'ra. In fact, there was the famous challenge the Rambam brings down between Yirmiyahu Hanavi and a false prophet by the name of Hananiah ben Azor. Yirmiyahu Hanavi prophesies that if you don't get your act together, the Beis Hamikdash is going to burn down. You're going to go to. You're going to be exiled to Babel. Get ready. And Hananiah ben Azor said, eh, "Don't worry about it. If you end up in Babel, we're all coming back right away. It's not going to be so terrible." Bechul, bechul. HaKadosh Baruch is going to protect us. So Yirmiyahu said to Hananiah, listen, I want to tell you something. If what you say doesn't come true, you're a false prophet. If what I say doesn't come true, and the destruction doesn't happen, I won't be a false prophet. So a Nevoa Lara doesn't have to happen. A Nevoa Latayv does have to happen, with one exception, not Nagei for us today. So in Pasha's Hazinu, Moshe Rabbeinu was talking already about the Churban Bayes Rishon hundreds of years before it happened. Does that mean that the Bayes Rishon had to burn down? No. He's just telling him, if you don't have your ducks in order, this is what can happen. And he's already telling them about the Churban Bayes Shani. And the Netziv now explains this into the Pasuk. The Pasuk has two parts to it. Halashem Tigmaluzais. One, how can you act this way in the presence of God? Am naval velochacham, a people who accepted the Torah and didn't get any wiser for it. Statement two. The first statement is the Churban Bayes Rishon, the second statement is Churban Bayes Shein. So that Ziv says, Halashem Tigmeluzais, Omer al Churban Bayes Rishon. The first part of the Pasik, how can you act this way? It's talking about the first Churban. <laughs> How can you do this? The first base Hamikdash was destroyed because of Avoidazara, Gilia Raya, Shvicha Stam, the Gemara tells us in Yumadaftes. So Moshe Rabbeinu was saying, Halashem Tegluzais, how can you conduct your lives in such a way in the presence of God? He's talking about the Khurban Bayesvish. But with respect to the Churban Bayashani, the Gemara in Yuma says, But the Churban Bayashani, the pious Rishon, the Zargilavash, the Zdamin. But in Bayashani, where they were Isaac, Betaira, Uber Gemilis Chasadim, that's what the Gemara says in Yuma. In the, sec- in the time of the second base of they did learn Taira. And they did do Gemilis Chasadim. Why was the second base of Mikdash destroyed? Because of Sinus Chinam. That's what the Pasuk means, Am Novo Volei Chachem. Eini yachlet moya leim hala Hashem tig meluzai, sherei mechavonam l'shem shemayim. The first statement, how can you do this to God, is only relevant to the first base I make, where there was avoid the Zorah Gilei Rashi Hashdamim. But you can't say, how can you do this to God during the, during the second base I make, because what were they doing? They were learning Torah and the Gungim Yilz Chazadim. What was the problem in the second base I make, Avol hapel she'atem am 
the shock that Moshe Rabbeinu had when he saw the second Beis HaMikdash, the Pele, is that Jewish people became an Am novel. Kitagum Unkelis, the Kabilu Eiraisa. You accepted the Torah. Hainu Shalomedim Vigayim B'Torah HaMachsheres Liyay Sadeh Riyasha. During the second Beis HaMikdash, they were studying Torah, and they were very involved in the study of Torah. And the, the, pre, the purpose of getting involved in the study of Torah is to prepare yourself to be a tzaddik v'yosha. The purpose of studying Torah is to become an oivr Hashem. That's the purpose of studying Torah. We say in Uval Etzion, Hu yiftach libeinu b'sayrosoi, v'yosem libeinu avosav yirosoi. Leif Simcha, other swarms say it's very clear there. He should open our heart through the Torah, meaning the Torah is a key. You use the Torah as a key to open your heart. And now that the heart is open, because I opened it with the key of the Torah, now Yira and Ava can go into my heart. The Torah is a key, open up your heart, and Yira and Ava can become part of your daily life. So that's what the study of Torah is about. Reishas Chachma Yiras Hashem V'chulu V'chulu the legion of Chazals about this. Chaval al the less lay dirta, v'sira le dirta avid, the Gemara says in Shabbos, woe to the person who has no home. He can't afford to build a home. So what does he do? He takes three two-by-fours and he builds a doorpost and he puts it somewhere in a, in a playground, wherever it is. That's oh, I built a doorway. Doorway to where? Where are you going? Not going anywhere. You can't, it, it's meaningless. The Gemara says, woe to the person who has no place to live but puts up a doorway. The Gemara says, this is similar, this is the same case as a person who has Torah but has no Yerushalayim. A person who has no Torah, a person that has Torah, but no Yerushalayim, is like a person who doesn't have a house. He, doesn't, he has a doorway, but he doesn't have a house. He has the doorway. What does he have? He's learning Torah, he has the doorway. What's the purpose of a doorway? To be able to get into the house. See, so he built himself a doorway, but he doesn't have a house. So what's the purpose of the doorway? It serves no purpose. So if a person builds a doorway, which is his Torah, but he doesn't have a house, so he can't get into the house, so what's the doorway worth? The purpose of the doorway is to get into the Torah. So this is a people, the Kabiloi Raisa. They accepted the Torah in the second base of Medrash. They're learning the Torah. They're engrossed in the Torah. The novel whom he lost in Medrash Bereshus Rabba, Neblus Chok Meshalmaila Torah. If you ever learn Masech the Brachas, um, the Mishnah has the Lashen, Noivlois. The Gemara talks about Noivlois. Noivlois are fruits that fall off a tree before they're ripe. There's a Shaila, what Bracha do you make on a fruit that falls off the tree if it's not fully ripe? A grape is not fully ripe. Do you make a bar pre H? What do you make on it? Noivlois means something that's not fully matured. It's, it didn't come to its tachlis. Am novel v'loy chacham. You are makabel the Torah, and what's the purpose of being makabel the Torah? To become a wiser person. And you are makabel the Torah, but the Torah never matured and ripened in you to become a better person. So you're an am novel. You accepted the Torah v'loy chacham. You didn't become any wiser, any better for it. So you're a novel. You're like a fruit that fall off the tree. You're never fully matured. Kahuva b'shem hagro zal. This is the pshat that the gro gave the pasuk, and the pasuk novel, according to the Tagum Unglis, means it's an unripened fruit. People are learning Torah in the second base hamikdash, and well, as my mother would say, zechron levracha nisht in gansin Yeah, we have supper. My mother was. Making the soup, whatever she's making, say, ah, it's, we're really hungry. We just got home from yeshiva. Can we? It's not fully cooked yet. What do you want at the soup? Yeah, the soup needs ten more minutes. 
have people who are learning Torah, and the Torah is supposed to cook, it's supposed to cook you into a final good product, and you shut off the fire underneath the pot, and you eat raw soup. It's not finished. It's a fruit that fell off the tree. It's not fully ripened. You don't even make a regular bracha on it. This is what the Gros says, am novel means. Unripened people who study Torah. Now the Nitziv continues. V'loi chacham, v'loi chakimun, they are unripened, unmatured Torah people. And why are they un- unmatured? The liyais nisharim mehan hagara, to stay away from bad conduct. Okay. The nitziv, you accepted the Torah, and you're not fully matured. The, the Torah didn't make you a better person. You're still not staying away from bad things. Mehan hagara. Now this word han hagara, I've debated with several people. There are different ways to read this Hanhagara, and I believe I'm right because the next line in the Netziv. Netziv now continues. Uchvan is Baila El Dalad Yudalad. And I already explained to you earlier, the Netziv says, in my Pirish, in Devorim, Perek Dalad, Perek Dalad, Pasig Yudalad, Shechurban Ba Yesheni, the destruction of the second base Hamikdash, Ba Hakilkul Al Yedei Gedoyle Taira. The second base Hamikdash, where the, the destruction of the second base Hamikdash came about, Hakilkel, Shakum by Bo Hakilkel, the ruination that led to the destruction of the second base Hamikdash came, Ayde Gedoyle Taiva. It happened through Gedoyle Taiva. Now you can't say such a thing today. But I can say it because Nitziv said it. We'll give one example. Ramchal talks about this, the Mesil Shishorim. He's not talking about this in, his, in this exact connotation, but he's talking about Midas Chasidus. Parakutes and Parakhof, he's talking about Midas Chasidus in the <coughs> Mesil Shishorim is written based upon the Braiser of Pinchas Ben Yoyer, what we call the Sulam, the latter Pinchas Ben Yoyer. Uh, there's a brysa how you become an Oivet Hashem Torah Mavil Dei Zahiros Zahiros Mavil Dei Zerizos Zerizos Mavil Dei Nekiyos etc going up and up and up this is what you do first this is what you do second this is what you do third you get to a high point called Hasidus we're not talking about Baal Shem Tov Hasidus but we're talking about Pinchas Ben Yor's idea of Hasidus and there in, in, the, in that discussion the Ramchal says that to be a true chassid means that you make decisions today about how you're going to conduct yourself and you look clearly at all the ramifications of your conduct. So if what you're going to do today is a tremendous, tremendous mitzvah, tremendous, unbelievable but your foresight tells you if I really do this now it will lead to X, Y, Z you need to take that seriously into account if X, Y, Z is not a good result you cannot today they have the big thing live the moment there's no such thing as living the moment the moment is you've got to know what preceded you you have to understand today to prepare for tomorrow live the moment is to forget about what I learned from my experience in the past and not care about the future and live the moment we don't live the moment so the Ramchal says that a person has to make decisions this moment, this is a good thing to do. One second. But what are the ramifications for on the day after? If they're not going to be good, you have to reconsider whether you want to do this today. Aye, but today it's good. But that's not how you live life if you're a chassid. He gives many examples. Of the examples he gives, there are two famous ones. First he says, Gedalia ben Achikam. 
The first base Amikdash was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. But after he destroyed the base Amikdash, there was uh, a hefty amount of Jews, uh, a sizable amount of Jews, that still lived in Eretz Yisrael. And then came the assassination of Gedalia ben Achikam. Gedalia ben Achikam was designated the governor over Eretz Yisrael by Nebuchadnezzar. And by assassinating uh, Yishmo uh, ben Nasanya, by assassinating Gedalia ben Achikam, he assassinated Nebuchadnezzar's appointed governor. So what did Nebuchadnezzar do? He sent the army back in and wiped out the rest of Klal Yisrael, basically, that was still in Eretz Yisrael. The Gemara Nida Daf Samach Aleph says, that that final wiping out of Klal Yisrael that was still in Eretz Yisrael is the fault of Gedalia ben Achikam. And the Gemara learns out from a Pasuk. There's a Pasuk that says all the lives that were lost and all the blood that was shed by Gedalia ben Achikam. The Gemara says, who did Gedalia ben Achikam kill? The Gemara says, responsible for all those people that died in the Vuchanetzer returning to Eretz Yisrael. Why? The Gemara says, because friends of Gedalia ben Achikam came to him and said Yishmol ben Asanya and others are planning to assassinate you you need to be careful and he said I'm not Makabal Hashem Hara I'm Makabal Hashem Hara and therefore he took no precautions to protect himself it's a gewaltig thing, no? not Makabal Hashem Hara the Ramchal says but yet the Gemara through the Pasuk, blames him for all those people that were killed. And the Gemara has a question, what should he have done? The Gemara said, yeah, he didn't have to be Makabal Lashon Hara, but you can, what's wrong with getting some private guards to protect you? I'm not Makabal Lashon Hara, but I'm going to hire private security to protect me. Why do I need to be protected? Because if I'm assassinated, Nebuchadnezzar is going to come here and wipe everybody out because I'm his appointed governor. No, 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 no. Not taking even security guards. And therefore, I'm not even going to take security guards. He was assassinated, Nebuchadnezzar came, and he's blamed for all that bloodshed. So Amchal says, you can do the biggest thing in the world, not Makabal Hashanah, but think through, if you're not Makabal Hashanah, that's fine, but what do you need to do to protect Klal Yisrael? You're the governor of Eretz Yisrael. Think through the ramifications of what you're doing. And that was Goyim the the final part of Churban Bayes Rishon. Churban Bayes Sheni, the Ramchal says, we all know, it's a Gemara in Gittin, very clear. Gemara in Gittin says that An Vasanusa Shavab Zechaya Ben Afkulas Achriv Espeseinu The misplaced humility of Rav Zechaya Ben Afkulas is what caused the destruction of the second base Hamikdash. Right? We all know the story. Kamtz and Bar Kamtz of Ochulu Ochulu and Barkamsa comes to the base Hamikdash and he says, I have a carbon from the Caesar. They start looking at it and they see it has a mum. So Zachary Ben of course says, Well, we're not going to slaughter this animal, which is exactly what Barkamsa wanted to hear. So Barkamsa can go back to the Roman Caesar and say, The Jews have revolted against you. They're not accepting your carbon. So the people in the base Hamikdash, the Sanhedrin, the way the Vilna going learns, the Sanhedrin said to Zachary Ben of course, Bring the carbon. Bring the carbon. If we don't bring the carbon, there'll be a catastrophe here. Says, no, 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 we're not going to do it. And you can imagine who Rabbi Zachai ben Afkulis is, the Vilna Goyen says. Who's Rabbi Zachai ben Afkulis? The Sanhedrin says, we ought to do this. And he says, we're not going to do that. And they listen to him. So you're talking about a re- a, a, the biggest of the big, if not the biggest. They all listen to him. So then they said to Rabbi Zachai ben Afkulis, okay, so let's kill Barkamsa, he's a writer. He's trying to have Jews murdered. No, we're not going to kill him either because if we kill him, people are going to get the mistaken impression that if you put a mum in an animal, you chayim nisa, we're not going to give out mistaken impressions. Okay. So they don't kill Barkamsa and they don't bring the carbon and the catastrophe happens. And the Gemara says, I'm not making this up. And some Sefer did make it up. The Gemara attests to the fact in Gittin, Am v'sanuz leish v'ab z'chayah ben v'kolos echri this great person of Zechai ben Afkulis is responsible for the Churm Bayashani. That's not exactly what the Nitziv is referring to here. 
But he does say that the Churm Bayasheni Ba Hakilkal Al Yede Gidoile Toyra. He's not talking about the Rev Zachaya ben Afkulases, and he's not talking about the Gedalia ben Achikams. He's talking here about Gedalia Torah, in reference to what the Vilna Goyen just said. There were people who learned and learned and learned and learned and learned in the second base Hamikdash. The Gemara says it. In the second base Hamikdash, they were Oisu B'Torah Milas Hasadim, and the base Hamikdash was still destroyed. What is base Hamikdash destroyed? Sinas Chinam. Where does Sinas Chinam penetrate into such a place? Everybody's learning Taira. The Lord says everybody's learning Taira. And it's even more hard to understand, more difficult to understand. The Gemara says, and they're Isaacing the Milas Chasadim. It's a generation. It's a Bayashani where they're learning Taira in depth. And they're doing Gemilas Chasadim, and we'll, the Rabbah Shalom destroys the Micro Sinas Chinam. Where does Sinas Chinam grow in a place where there's so much Taira being learned? Where does Sinas Chinam grow in a place where there's so much Kamilas Hasadim going on? The answer is, I'm novel for Chacham. This is Moshe Rabbeinu's message. You can accept the Torah, I'm a Kapilo Eraisa, Veloi Chakimun. You're a novel. You haven't matured yet. You can do all the Chesed in the world, and you can learn all the Torah in the world, and you're a novel. You're an unripened, immature, person. The Torah hasn't yet changed you. You can still engage in Sinas Chinam with all your Torah and all your Milas Hasadim because you're a novel. The Torah never worked its way through your Kishkes to change who you are. With that introduction, let's take a look at page one, the Rav Kook itself. <clears throat> Take a look at the first sentence. You know, take a look at how um, Rav Drovi explains it. If you go to the last line, at the end of the last line, Rav Kook, you see Rav Kook quotes this Pasuk. So you can see on the very first page of the handout on Rav Kook's writing himself, in the last line he quotes this Pasuk and he quotes the Unkelis. Okay, now to the first line of Rav Kook. Hatayra nitla Yisrael. The Torah was given to Klal Yisrael. Kedei shashayra sharei ora yoser bihirim. So, gates that have light that are much clearer. Yoser rechavim, lights that are much broader. Yoser kedoshim, light that's much holier. Mikol shari ha'ora shalabina hativa shalrua hamusra hativa shaladam brighter, clearer than all the understanding, the innate understandings of mankind, the basic right and wrongs, the basic morality that's built into man. Okay. Pasuk in Kahelis Elokim asa es ha'adam yashar ve'im abikshu cheshbainas rabim. Elokim Asa Sa'adam Yasha. God made man to be a Yasha. That's his innate propensity to be a Yasha. Vehema Bikshu Cheshbainus Rab. A man decided to make a lot of Cheshbainus. Maybe yeah, maybe not. This, that. A man decided that he wanted to veer a little to the right, veer a little to the left, have a good time here, have a good time there, don't do this, we'll do that, maybe yes, maybe no. The Rabbi Shalom put the person, the person's default setting is Yashar. Elakim also saw him Yashar. That's his default setting. And you, man, sought out all kinds of cheshbainas. And you complicated your life. But man has a certain innate sense of right and wrong, of morality and immorality, which you can't even tell today anymore. When you say this thing, man has an innate sense of right and wrong. Man has an innate sense of morality versus immorality. It's hard to even say the words today because you say, well, what's Lublin talking about? If anything, man is born with an innate sense of immorality. It's not, it, you're talking about an education system and a society and a culture that now has perverted the system. This is the Elohim Asa Sa'adam Yashar Vem Bikshu Cheshbainis Rabbim. 
last week or 10 days ago, there was a professor fired from, I forgot the name of the college in America, it was a tenured professor. I'm not sure how you fire tenured professors anymore. I thought you couldn't be fired. I guess that nothing, there are no rules today. But he was writing, he was a biologist. He was writing a scientific article. And he's talking about transgender. So, like an off-the-cuff statement, he said, the law can define sexes as it wants. Because the law is made by politicians, and politicians are elected by the citizens, and they can decide whatever they want to do in the law. But in biology, which is an exact science, there's only two sexes, male and female. But the law can do whatever they want with that, but biology is the biology. So he got fired for that sentence. Is there anything false about that sentence? Anything false? Has anybody ever seen a transgender born? The people today want to tell you, he's born a transgender. He's born gay. In our lifetime, very recently, Mizogin, 15 years ago, the DSM, which is the Bible of psychologists, the Diagnostic Manual, I believe it was DSM-4, certainly DSM-3, I think they're up to 6 now because they keep on becoming more advanced. I say that sarcastically. In DSM-3, could be even 4, homosexuality was considered an emotional disease and there was treatments for it. And then, this is what the American psychologist wrote. It's a diagnosis with a treatment, and then suddenly it left the book. It was no longer a psychological ailment. And then after it was not in the book, it became perfectly normal. And then after it became perfectly normal, it became, if you say anything against it, you're abnormal. This is the process that has occurred quickly in our own lifetime. So to say today, the Rabbani Shalom created man with an innate sense of right and wrong, an innate sense of morality, say, what are you talking about? Yes, that's the way it is. And man decided to pervert himself. But the Torah was given to us because the Torah's morality and the Torah's right and wrong develops the innate right and wrong. Rav Cook is saying that man's innate right and wrong, that Elohim Osa Es Adam Yasha, it says Elohim Osa Es Adam Yasha, man made Adam Arishna Yasha. He had an innate sense of Yashras. But that innate sense of Yashras could be strengthened, given more light, given a deeper understanding. That's what the Torah came for. The Torah didn't come to take man and destroy his innate sense and replace it with something else. It came to take the fundamentals that man was already born with and perfect them and give them a greater behirut, a greater clarity upon which the Torah is built. And that's why I think before Shavuos, we looked at the other piece of Rav Kook, <clears throat> where he explained Derech Eretz Kod what does Derech Eretz Kod Mulatayra mean? So, we, always, we have this uh, tendency to say Derech Eretz Kod Mulatayra means etiquette. You know, etiquette comes before the Torah. Not throwing your banana peel on the floor comes before studying Shosh uh, The etiquette, a certain fineness, comes before the Torah. Derech Eretz Kod Mulatayra means, according to Rav Kook, the basic sense of right and wrong, the derech ha'oretz, that basic sense of right and wrong was put into mankind before man was given the Torah. It took 26 generations before HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the Torah to Har Sinai. We know in Pirkei Yavosh there are 10 generations from Adam to Noach, then there are 10 generations from Noach to Avram, that's 20, to Noach to Avram, that's 20. Then Avram, Yav Yitzchak, Yaakov, Levi, Kahas, Amram, Moshe. 26 generations until Torah was given. 
Those 26 generations, there were tzaddikim who had an understanding of right and wrong. And Rav Dro, we give you an example. Um, Shem and Yefes. They realize that their father is naked in his tent after the marble. So they take an article of clothing and they are carrying it in and as soon as they get into the tent what does the Torah tell us they do? They turn their backs and they dropped the garment onto Noyach their father. Why? Because it wasn't right to see your father naked. Who taught them that? Who taught them what? Who Moshe Rabbeinu? Yaakov Rabbeinu? Rabbi Kiva Ege? Who said to Shem and Yefes that it's not nice to see your father naked? And what you need to do is now turn your bodies around and drop that garment on him. Who was the Rebbe that taught them that? It was in eight sense called Derech Eretz Kadmolatayra, where people understood there are things that are right, and there are things that are wrong, and there are things you do, and there are things that you don't do. And that, 26 generations later, came the Rabbani Shalom and said, I'm now going to give you the gift of the Torah so that you can take that innate Elohim Asa Sa'odam Yasha, and you can further perfect it and bring it with a greater light and a greater, to become a greater person. <clears throat> Okay, let's just read page 453, the top paragraph, and we'll end there for today. This is Rav Drory himself's introduction to this Rav Kook. In the first chapters of this, uh, in the first paragraphs of this chapter we saw, Shemishi and Nasa Leches Bedache Amusa Tairani, Mebli Shiyakshiv Gamla Musra Tivishaloi, someone that will try to conduct his life according to what we call Musra Torah, Torah morality, but doesn't have as its underpinnings the Musr Hativi, the Derech Eretz Kodma Torah, he ignores that. I will prove to you that if you, uh, if you get rid of that Musr Tivi, that Elohim Osr Sa'odam Yosher, and you want to get it out of your life and say, ah, that... That stuff is not for me. I am going to only live by Torah Musa. The innate Musa HaKadosh Baruch Hu put in me as to what's right and wrong, not, that's good for Goyim. I am completely built on Musa Torah. The Musa Torah will be Nishras too. She can koimas ha Musa Tairani oimedes al bosa ha Musa ativi. The Torah Musa, the Torah right and wrong, is built already on a foundation that the Rabbani Shalom put into mankind, which is called the Musa Ativi, the basic innate right from wrong. That's why Derech Eretz is called Mala Torah. It becomes the basis, it becomes the foundation upon which you're going to build Torah on it. And the basis is going to become stronger. The basis will make what's above it stronger. What's above it, the Torah will make the basis stronger. But if you're going to disconnect from that basis, you're going to be dangling in the heavens. You have no foundation upon which to build your Torah. And this, Rav Kook, is going to lead up to Am Naval V'loi Chacham. The Chakimu Oiraisa. The Kabila Rais Le Chakimu. Your person will be engrossed and, and learning and learning and learning and learning and learning. And yet he's not ripened. It's like, he, it's like a fruit that fell off the tree. He has no foundation. He's not connected to the tree anymore. And you, you don't, what bracha do you even make on such a thing? It's not ripe. Because it lacks the connection to its source. It lacks the connection to the tree. Like the Musa Tairani becomes disconnected from the Musa Hativi. Everybody have a wonderful week. Thank you.